Hey everybody, it's Jeff once again with Entrepreneur Essentials. I'm here with my friend Mike Schenk from Learning Cycle Tutors. And we're going to talk a little bit today about what you know Mike's journey was getting into the entrepreneurial journey. Um, he took a somewhat non-traditional route and uh, ended up as an entrepreneur after he retired from the military. So with that, Mike, Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity, here. Jeff. I appreciate You're being welcome. able to talk with uh, you and your constituents here on the YouTube channel. Um, to be quite frank, uh, I was in a pretty traditional service-oriented uh, career as a military officer. I did that for 26 and a half years or so mm -hmm. um, after, uh, after college, having entered through ROTC. Helicopter pilot most of the time, but as an officer, you're kind of uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I mastered the helicopter because that's kind of a safety. You kind of have to safety that, requirement, but the rest of them I was pretty good at. Mm -hmm. um, and and when I took the opportunity to retire, I was uh, at about 47 years old. And really had I had no objective after yeah. retirement except <laughs> uh, to retire, which is a dangerous position to be in mm -hmm. uh, to go from super busy. Uh, it's a not super busy. So I would uh, self-profess I was the least likely person uh, to start my own business and, and take that road. Uh, traveled by many, but not succeeded by all. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was an opportunity for me to invest a little bit of uh, self-education and kind of uh, transition through that lonely period of retirement mm -hmm. uh, into something more meaningful. And uh, as a self-employed uh, and entrepreneurial, you get kind of get to drive your own train, so to speak. Yeah. So that felt like a comfortable space to start in. Um, in the last two years, I've been on that train. Okay, very cool. So tell us a little bit about what Learning Cycle Tutors is and how you how you came about that idea. Um, it, you know, I, I, I chuckle a little bit every time someone says the title because there's still a percentage of confusion with respect to what the cycle means. Yes. Uh, most folks who know me before uh, the business know I'm an avid cyclist, uh, bicycle and motorcyclist, so they try to figure out what this has to do with cycling. And it's really just an overthought double <laughs> entendre. Um, so we're really focused on the learning cycle as it applies to the brain. Um, so what we thought was uh, to grab um, and collect as many overly educated, underutilized um, adults as we could and apply them to the next generation of learners. Mm -hmm. um, so myself, I had the, a great opportunity in the Army to get my graduate degree in applied mathematics. Okay. And I taught for a few years at West Point, which is a very eye-opening, non-traditional military role uh, while serving. Uh, granted, you have a, a pretty um, uniform population of mm -hmm. students. They're all in the Pretty 14th. motivated. <laughs> and, yeah. Very motivated to succeed. They're all in the 14 to 1600 SAT range. Um, there were days where the students challenged me, quite frankly, mm -hmm. as a new instructor, and I would uh, have to revert to things like, uh, that's a great question, research that, and let us know the answer tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a deflection mechanism. But uh, as I retired at 47, I thought, wow, it would be great to get back in the education space mm -hmm. in a non-threatening, um, non-group environment, you know, work okay. with one child at a time or one student at a time. Um, I thought that would be the most effective use of, of my skills. And amazingly, we're able to find was able to find other people who were interested in doing the same uh, with advanced degrees. So we we specifically sought um, master's degree or PhD level adults okay. who are either working, not working, retired, not retired, who really didn't care as long as they went to put a couple of hours of their time into the next generation. And, and traditionally, some of your folks aren't really teachers. No, they, yeah, no, we have um, about a 60-40 split. 60% um, are actually past or currently serving teachers. That's generally in the middle school ages and below. Mm -hmm. But most of our, our high school age uh, students, the tutors for high school age students are professionals in the workplace, yeah. engineers, physicists, uh, retired mathematicians, whatever. Yeah, they have a passion yeah. for, yeah. for and they, teaching. And they, common, the common theme is they all miss, it. They okay. miss having an academic connection to a, another person. Okay. Um, it's not working on a project, it's, it's working with a person. Mm -hmm. So that's the draw. So we uh, were able to um, capture a, a good number of employees in that, in that realm and then 
a good number of families gravitate towards the adult, well-educated, mature uh, person who just wants to help their students. Absolutely. Succeed. So now, does do they go to a, a location and and tutor? No, or um, how does it work? The one, the small amount of research I did before I started my business, which will lead to other you know pitfalls. Um, was I worked at Mathnasium actually for about six months because okay. one, I wanted to kind of re-blue my, that's a military term, sorry, I wanted to refresh on mathematics, if mm -hmm. you will, because uh, in teaching at West Point is great, but that was also in the late 90s, early mm -hmm. 2000s. So yeah. um, I, I will profess that no one remembers math forever. So I went to a Mathnasium and taught a little bit, and quite frankly, I saw some things that I thought were barriers to um, to success for some of those students, even while attending Mathnasium. Mm -hmm. um, there was not uniformity in uh, tutor assignment, there wasn't consistency, yeah. so students could come in four days a week and see four different tutors. Mm. I didn't really understand how the continuity of effort was applied in that case. Um, and sometimes it was more of a student-led selection of tutors where uh, they weren't necessarily pairing for the right reasons. Okay. So it just seemed kind of inefficient. And what I also noticed was a lot of parents super frustrated with the 50 minute or the one hour commute requirement. Mm -hmm. So in addition to maybe picking up their student at school and attending an extracurricular after school activity, now having to drive them to a Sylvan or a Mountain To and Asia, from, and yeah. yeah. Which is a great, they're all great um, opportunities for students to excel, but it's just one more place to have mm -hmm. to go. So the, the first check on the box was, we need to take this service to the client's home. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's safe, it's comfortable, the parents can work on other activities mm -hmm. uh, while the student's tutoring. They get continual updates, can talk to the tutor every time they're there. Uh, so we thought that was the most powerful um, element of the business model was the old uh, home visit doctor's mm -hmm. philosophy of uh, take the tutor to the client, yeah. you know, meet their needs. Now, do your typical students, do they stay with you year round or do they typically go, you know, during the school year and then they take off during the summer? Yeah, that was part of the growth of the company, actually. We thought initially that this is going to be a year round, it's great, but there's a bill, you know, yeah. for tutoring. So, not every eighth grade parent, uh, a parent of an eighth grade student is ready to to pay tuition yeah, pony for up for 12 yeah. months, yeah. Um, so what we, we acquiesced to an academic year focus. So okay. we, we maintained the academic year of the ISD that we're involved in, the okay. Independent School District. Um, so if they are on Thanksgiving break, we take Thanksgiving off. All Christmas right. breaks are off. If, if parents want to continue through those periods for continuity, we obviously can meet, meet their needs. But we try to match the academic calendar Okay. Both uh, in terms of how you know much of a financial investment the parent has, but also, frankly, some students need a break, and that's why those mm -hmm. breaks are there. Yeah. But in the summertime, we've toyed with a few different options, and quite frankly, we've now um, and we enjoy having the summers off. I guess we're yeah. like most teachers; yeah. <laughs> we look like, forward to. Okay, the, we're kind to, of yeah. We so that's why break. we got into this. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so I travel a little in the summer. A few tutors will tutor uh, primarily in the elementary grades because parents will really uh, want to bridge that gap between. Uh, second grade and third grade, okay. they don't want the students to kind of backslide. So we, we do some of that, but for the most part, we try to stay aligned with the academic year. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. What are some new things in your business now that you're doing? How, well, we, uh, we dabbled in the SAT, a ACT mm -hmm. prep Remember that world. during the summer? Yeah, it was um, a little bit of a rabbit hole for us because we started a little late on the advertising. Uh, but quite frankly, we learned that it's probably not what we're best at. Okay. Um, you know, it puts us into a group setting, multi-students, one tutor. Mm -hmm. We really enjoy the success and the power of one tutor, one student. So we backed off that a little bit and, and, uh, and created an opportunity for one of our competitors here in the market, uh, Club Z Tutoring. So uh, the owner of that business and myself kind of share different uh, referrals in terms of what the students are looking for. Okay. So it's uh, great for Cedar Park and Round Rock, uh, Georgetown, Leander, because now they have uh, two tutoring services that are relatively competitive price-wise, uh, but are specializing in different areas. So Which we're is trying fantastic. to fantastic. Yeah, and, and you have a good relationship with them, right? And it's a cooperate and graduate. Yeah. I mean, not every business needs to go out hunting to kill their their mm -hmm. their competition. You know, it's it's a little bit better for everyone if we just work together and awesome and meet the needs. So. What we've done is we've uh, also, and not necessarily a new, but more focused this year, is we've trying to connect um, healthy activities with academics. Oh, and nice. this gets back to the cycling a little bit. Uh, but my, my wife and I and a few other board members run a 
a, a free nonprofit cycling activity in the fall. And what we try to do is motivate our students, whether they're academic or athletic or a combination of both, to join us for a couple of cycling events. So okay. they can join as a participant, they can join as um, a volunteer, mm -hmm. and we um, provide them with tuition credits back towards oh, tutoring. Nice. Yeah. Um, which the parents are happy to happy mm -hmm. to accept. <laughs> happy uh, to volunteer their kids for the event. <laughs> right. And the goal is, you know, it's that whole uh, act, you know, brain fitness, body mm -hmm. fitness. It all complements each other. So we get them outside and into the fresh air and away from the, the computer or the couch or mm -hmm. the Game Boy or the homework. Yeah. And we just provide them another opportunity. So we're trying to better connect those two um, endeavors, if you will, to to help students be. Uh, have a fitness ethic or a wellness yeah. ethic. We're having some conversations with one of the local nonprofits about that same thing for next year. Yeah. Just getting the whole city going that way. And it is powerful and the yeah. city is uh, doing great strides with respect to their pedestrian and bike access mm -hmm. paths in multi-use areas. Um, it's great connectivity between Cedar Park, Round Rock and the county mm -hmm. uh, for connecting all these things so you can sure. literally ride all day and mm -hmm. not see a car. That, yeah, which is really fantastic. Nice. Yeah. And well, wonderful. So fast five questions now. Oh, yeah. Slow, if, slow five answers. Slow five <laughs> answers, but fast five questions. Um, you wake up in the morning, business is gone. You have 500 bucks in your pocket, laptop, computer, food and shelter are taken care of. What would you do first? Yeah, so Maslow's higher needs, needs are, are taken, care taken care of. Yeah. Um, to be quite honest, uh, a lot. some of that $500 would probably go where my current money goes. We, we donate our profits from the business to either Heroes Night Out or to our cycling nonprofit. Okay. So we probably continue to support uh, those two activities because they're important to us, um, important to our kids who participate in those activities. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably uh, but batten down the hatches and spend about 90 days researching the next endeavor. Okay. Um, I spent about 90 days deciding on uh, learning cycle tutors and mm -hmm. took advantage of uh, Austin's small business program, which I know you're working on here, which mm -hmm. is great. Three years ago, I could have used it right here. Um, but I'd probably find the next thing that motivates me to want to continue to pursue nice. activeness, yeah. uh, whether it's mental activeness or physical activeness. But mm -hmm. um, probably a coaching role in the cycling world um, is on my uh, to-do bucket list, if you will. Okay. Uh, that's going to tie into our kids somehow. Um, but it's, it's time is... If I had the time and I wasn't worrying about anything else and I had that $500, I probably wouldn't spend much of it, to be frank. Mm -hmm. But I spent a lot of time thinking yeah, about Yeah, just think uh, through, okay, this yeah, is where I'm going the next, next. direction yeah. is. Yeah. That's great. Um, tell us about your biggest entrepreneurial mistake. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is uh, assuming that your idea is a good idea. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of ideas. Oh, yeah. And whether they come from your own uh, brain or someone else's brain, they're not all great. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that they're all not great until a few fail. So yeah. for me, it was about advertising, to be quite honest with you. Okay. Um, the, the power of print advertising, online advertising, all advertising um, is very difficult to figure out. And I probably should have sought more advice from people that are uh, professionals in that space. Mm -hmm. um, so I over-invested in some advertising um, that arguably led to a few um, client connections, which mm -hmm. is great, but it really uh, was a detriment to cash, cash flow. Yeah, and ROI it wasn't there. Yeah. 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 Return on investment wasn't high. Um, it was frankly red, and <laughs> um, and, and we, kind of, we professionally uh, moved away from some of those commitments um, and relied on the power of, of, of empowering our current clients to generate new clients. So we developed a fairly robust client referral uh, program uh, with some of our other local businesses. So Redhorn Coffee and Brew House, if you're familiar with, uh, we have a program where when a client successfully refers a neighbor, a relative, another mm -hmm. client, uh, we actually do some gift carding you know, oh, for nice. that client. Or we offer, the, if we're tutoring their student currently, we offer them tuition uh, reimbursement for referred clients. So as most businesses go, current clients refer clients like them. Mm -hmm. And those are typically good clients. So yeah. it, really, it really helps us get beyond the cultivating uh, new constituents. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a bigger team doing that now. Sure. And that human connection is... Uh, for us has been more powerful mm -hmm. than print advertising. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, it depends on the business, I think, now. Right. It's, it's, some of it is, some of it print advertising just is a, a 
you know, whatever, uh, brand recognition more right. than anything, you yeah. know, more than driving income. Yes, sir. Um, tell us a little bit, or tell us a book that you might recommend. Um, so my, the latter part of my military career was focused on uh, leadership studies and quite frankly, the, um, the identification and eradication of toxicity in okay. our leaders. Um, so Barbara Kellerman is my favorite author. It's not, she's not necessarily a how to start a business author. Mm -hmm. She's how to lead a business author um, or how to lead those in your business. So um, she, excuse me, that was yep. professional. Um, <laughs> one of her best books is called Servant, Servant Leadership. Okay. Um, yeah. And she really talks about two topics. One is how to be a better follower. Okay. Um, because we all typically grow up in the follower role and we earn some leadership role. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a boss. So you're always in this battle between followership yep. in a non-negative context um, and leadership. So she does a pretty good job of, of breaking those down and the different kinds of uh, philosophies that flow from each area. Okay. So. She uh, writes books specifically on toxic leadership mm -hmm. and how to identify it and eradicate it in your organization. Um, the Army is a pretty big organization. That's a tough animal. Mm -hmm. um, but for smaller businesses, especially the self-employed businesses, that are, you have a manageable number of people and you can talk to all of them. Uh, you really have the ability to influence. Well, a lot of times uh, it's leadership. more effect right. in that situation where you have a smaller you know, yeah. Yeah, a smaller group. You can't hide You're right. as easily. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows who's, who's given, the, given the order. Yeah. So, uh, they need to be just, fair, and you know, well thought. Absolutely. So, yeah, Barbara Kellerman. I'd recommend her for anyone who okay. fancies himself uh, as a as a leader level or high level leader. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have a tool that you use in your business every day, like an Evernote or you know, Google Draw? So Docs we made the decision, um, and I use we a lot because it makes your company sound big, but it's yeah. generally me. It's just you. Um, <laughs> but you know, we may we may grow a little bit in that. In that administrative space, but quite frankly, we made the decision to be paperless from the beginning. Got it. Um, that's that briefs well. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to do. Yeah. Um, so one of the mechanisms we've gone to in the in the company is uh, the Google Drive. It's not mm -hmm. new by any means, but it's a, a pretty effective tool for me to share uh, information and documents in in and between all the tutors. We have such a dispersed workforce, you know, with mm -hmm. about 15 tutors. We literally only get together once a year. Yeah. So in order to uh, affect change or to affect um, uniformity in the way we do things, we really rely upon um, digital communications, mm -hmm. uh, which include face-to-face, -face, FaceTime, um, and also the, uh, the ability to share, edit, comment on, and collaborate on documents through Google Drive. So we're pretty heavily reliant on Google Drive in terms of our ability to not have to create a lot of unnecessary. Oh, I, I think that's from an efficiency standpoint yeah. too. You, yeah, the, I think the one nice thing is you can both be in a document editing at the same right. time. Yeah, and you and you can ask questions there. It's it's um, we have not yet to probably tap the full power of the capability, but we're we're using it more efficiently every day. Absolutely. So, yeah. so how do folks get a hold of you? Uh, we are uh, typically uh, contacted in three ways. Uh, okay. We have uh, a website, learningcycletutors.com, um, which you can reach us through the contact page. There's just a, essentially a couple of tidbits of information, like mm -hmm. the zip code you reside in, uh, what subject you're looking for in terms of tutoring, and then some free text capabilities. So a lot of our clients, because they've already been through Yelp and mm -hmm. they've been through Google Business and they've looked for some local companies, uh, online, uh, that's the most efficient path probably for folks to come in because it comes directly to me and mm -hmm. it has a 24 to 48 hour response time. And that first response is basically, this is all about our company and how we work. Mm -hmm. um, so you're overwhelmed, a little overwhelmed with information <laughs> initially, but I like people to be able to know everything behind the curtain before they have to make a decision. Um, the other way is obviously we have a phone number which you can mm -hmm. uh, get off of our Facebook page or okay. on our website. But um, a lot of folks um, are being referred by their other clients, so mm -hmm. Nextdoor has been um, surprisingly beneficial for <laughs> us lately um, because now we have enough client base now in our third year of business where there's not, there's not a client in every neighborhood, but there's a client in many neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're very quick um, you know, to recommend us if they've had a good experience, and we're happy that they're doing that. Um, so folks will come to us through Nextdoor, so we maintain a company presence on Nextdoor as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. again, trying to do, trying to be in, in the digital age, and hyper, um, yeah, hyper which local, is hard for mature <laughs> individuals. 
to, to right. gain a You're not that in. mature. We're, we're, right. we're the yeah. same age, so you're yeah. not that mature. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it makes sense. It's, yeah. yeah, and you're so hyper-local in the areas that you're at. And I think, how far out do your tutors typically go? Uh, from, most from an area, yeah. The, the beauty of um, our workforce is a tutor gets to decide uh, their their radius of ser service from their okay. location. They get to decide on how many hours they're willing to tutor per week, um, and they also have kind of a, a yes no decision at the consultation with the client. Because no, not okay. every client's right for every tutor. Not every tutor's right for every client. So they have a lot of flexibility. Um, the majority of tutors work within a 10 mile radius of their home residence, okay. but I would tell you that's generally focused at uh, 620 uh, Interstate 45 or Toll Road 45 and north. Yeah. Uh, we call ourselves a hyper-local company uh, mm -hmm. and we align ourselves with the Leander and Round Rock Independent School Districts. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of tutor companies in the Austin Independent School District and we're very um, willing to help research and recommend, mm -hmm. you know, our partner tutors in those areas for clients that may not be aligned with our geographical sure. support area. Um, but we tend to focus on those ISDs because we're familiar with their curriculums mm -hmm. and, you know, knowledge it of makes their makes it a lot easier to, to it makes stay up on better at our jobs. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, Mike, thank you so much for coming out today. Um, you guys, I tell you, they are a fantastic tutoring company. They've got some of the best people that are out there. So take the opportunity if you need tutoring for your kiddos all the way from elementary up to high school. Sure. Um, definitely reach out to Mike and, and have a conversation about that. Um, right below me is our subscription spot. Uh, go ahead and click on that. Make sure that you're signed up for subscriptions because when we uh, publish a new one of these each week, we're gonna you know, pop it out there and you'll see it immediately on your email as soon as we do that. So make sure you do that. So thanks a lot, Mike, and everybody, great, uh, great time today. Hopefully you have a really good week uh, this next week, and we look forward to seeing you back here in a week. Have a great day. Thanks.